Hello, and welcome to the second video tutorial for Astronomer. In the first tutorial, we went over the basics, um, well, not really the basics, but just kind of got you up and running quickly. But now, we're going to go into detail about um, some of the some of the mysterious stuff that you witnessed that didn't really make sense, it wasn't explained. So, I'm just going to start with the simple gear uh, design. The stuff I'm talking about, it doesn't matter whether you created your gear design using the free draw or the image or whatever. You just need to provide initial gear design and then go to the astronomer tab. Alright, so what the heck is everything about here? There are sort of a ton of, you know, a ton of options here. Um, okay, so let me explain what's going on. As before, we draw this line, which is an optional center of rotation curve. You can put the center of rotation anywhere along that curve. Okay, now why do we do this? What we're trying to do is find pairs of mechanisms that have the exact same center to center distance. We want to find an internal gear and an external gear that have the spacing such that they are exactly the same and you can fit the two mechanisms together. With the regular, you know, Gearify, you can create an internal gear. Sorry, you can create an external gear, like so. The center to center distance is whatever that, whatever the length of that white line is. Likewise, we can create an internal gear. And the center to center distance is whatever that length is. Again, this distance is merely the distance from the center of the uh, center of the generated gear to the center of the known gear. The idea is that you can attempt the calculation for different rotation ratios. What I'm saying here is generate a series of graphs with a rotation ratio of 3 up to a rotation ratio of 3. Now, I could make that instead of 3 to 3, I'm going to make it 3 to 9. And for the internal gear, I'm going to make rotation ratios from 6 to 12. Okay, and I'm going to say search. Now it's generating a series of graphs. Each graph corresponds to a specific rotation ratio. The red curves are curves for external calculations, external gears. The yellow curves correspond to internal gears. It's just the same as if you had created a gear using the regular Gearify and said that you wanted an internal gear. But what are the uh, what are the axes of this graph? Horizontally, V, this is the degree of flexibility that you provided. The left side of the graph corresponds, or V equals zero, corresponds to one end of, of the uh, center of rotation curve. The right side corresponds to the other end. This is V equals zero. In fact, you can see up here, it shows you what value of V you're currently hovering over. This is V equals zero. This is V equals one. In fact, there's a slider here that says preview V. I can drag this and you will see that little white point moving across the curve. V equals 1 is that side, V equals 0 is the other side. Now what is the vertical axis? The vertical axis for each of these 
is the center to center distance of the generated gear mechanism for each particular value of V. And what is the value of V? It's a point on that curve where the center of rotation is placed. So what this means, so notice that you can hover over the graph and whichever one is highlighted, it shows you up above here the rotation ratios corresponding to these graphs. This one corresponds to a rotation ratio of 9 to 1 for the external gear and 12 to 1 for the internal gear. Likewise, this one is 6 to 9, this one is 3 to 6. Okay. So, what we can do then is look for intersections between these graphs. The intersections correspond to specific values of V or specific points along the curve such that the center to center distance between the two is exactly the same. So here we know that for a value of V equals it's around 0 0.055 which is about um, what is that? It's about 5% of the way across the curve right there. Notice it marked the point on the curve. For that value of V, for that point on the curve, the center to center distance for the two, see the blue up there, distance equals 5.46. So for both the internal and the external gears generated with a rotation ratio of 6 and 9 respectively, We, we achieve the exact same center to center distance and that's all we need to create a planetary gear mechanism. But what you can do is you can specify different range parameters. Here I did external rotation ratio from 3 to 9, internal from 6 to 12. Now why did it only create three graphs for each? Well, because I specified I wanted the numerator to be multiples of 3. Why did I say numerator? Because the, the rotation ratio is always a fraction. The denominator is here which is symmetry. Now this is a, a very specific type of symmetry that you are not going to touch in this design mode. This is for math oriented users um, and for this uh, more intuitive interface um, it's not something that you should concern yourself with. Leave that value at 1, don't play with it. Okay, but I can make this uh, numerator multiples of 4. Notice it's unhappy if you don't, so I said multiples of 4, well then my range needs to be multiples of 4. So it doesn't like 9, but 8 is okay, uh, 11 is bad, 12 is okay. It's wanting multiples of 4. This can be 8 to 16, for example. Oops. 16. I can search. Now why do we care about these multiples? Well, there's a very good reason for that. It turns out that due to the symmetry, the number of planet gears you can place in your graph is equal to the greatest common divisor of these rotation ratios. Here I have selected an intersection corresponding to an external rotation ratio of 4 and an internal rotation ratio of 8. The greatest common divisor, which is the highest number that divides both numbers, 8 and 4, is 4. And that means you'll be able to fit up to um, up to 4 planet gears in your mechanism. And Gearify will always already uh, display the maximum number of planet gears that you can fit. It is possible that for gears with particular symmetries you may be able to find even more, uh, you may be able to fit even more planet gears into your mechanism, but that's something that you'll have to investigate and uh, experiment with yourself. But it is interesting, so instead of using multiples of four to use just multiples of one and create you know, a whole, uh, a whole set of graphs 
depending on what the greatest common divisor of the intersection is, the number of planet gears you can fit will change. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, okay, let me just to top this, just to finish this off, I'm going to calculate that uh, the intersection I computed, just because why not? As I said, this is four to eight, so we should see four gears in the result. Okay, just about done, and there we go, cool. Alright, so a final piece of information I'm going to give you. You will find that specific combinations of rotation ratios are easier to find intersections. So, 3 and 6, 3 for the external, 6 for the internal, that very often produces uh, an intersection. Generally, it's very easy to find these. However, other combinations of rotation ratios will not be so easy. In fact, there are quite a variety of instances, in fact, they're, you know, more common than not, where you don't find an intersection. This dialog message just popped up saying, sorry, no planetary gears were discovered. Try using a different rotation ratio range or a different gear design and search again. You're not always going to find uh, a planetary gear mechanism. That's why this is a search engine. It helps you look for stuff, but it doesn't really let you uh, just create things arbitrarily. That's why it's called Astronomer, because it lets you search for planetary gears. Okay, I'm going to show you one last cool thing before ending this tutorial. Let me just change this design up a little bit. Uh, what do I want to be? How about something that's kind of neat okay you may have noticed every time I draw so I'm going to use a specific uh, just one one specific set of rotation ratios so that I don't get repeated graphs so I just have one external graph, one internal graph, one red, one yellow. I'm going to draw my curve. I'm going to click my intersection points. Now I'm going to toss it away. I'm going to right click, get rid of the busier curve, and draw another. Notice these blue dots that showed up. The blue dots, you can't click on them or do anything with them, but they remember where the intersections occurred. Let's draw another curve. Okay, found four intersections with this one. I'm going to click on each one. As I click on them, it's highlighting the location on the gear where the planetary gear is found. But as I keep clicking, it remembers the previous points. I'm going to do this a little bit longer. And we found more. Now what you will begin to see is that a pattern emerges on the gear. There's actually some sort of curve along here 
where you begin to see you will always have success with creating your planetary gears. You can see there's some sort of like an oval shaped here and you know if I draw a line from here to there I'm pretty certain that somewhere bet between around here and around here I'm gonna find an intersection. Let's give it a shot. Search. Click right there, right there, just as we thought. So what this actually means is that you have an additional degree of freedom. Now that you begin to see that curve, you can actually realize that there is some flexibility with where you place the center of rotation. And choosing points along specific areas of this curve will yield different resulting planetary gear mechanisms. So you can actually experiment with the different areas on this curve and see what the resulting uh, what the resulting mechanisms look like. And it does, in, in many cases, it does actually create a fair bit of variety. Some look better than others. So just because you draw a curve and you see, you find an intersection doesn't mean that's the, that's your only option. You have lots of options here. Anywhere along that, along this sort of circle that we're kind of uh, creating and discovering bit by bit. We're filling in the gaps here. Yeah, so, um, and this, this actually does make a big difference. Sometimes, you know, if you choose it on one spot, the resulting gear looks terrible. Other times you choose a better spot and it looks a lot better. So, yeah, so you can experiment with the different, different positions. All right, well, I think that's enough for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the accuracy settings that you need to build a physical model. Um, Alright, well thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.